Yeah, so we've just done a bit of an upgrade on this one just to set it off uh, grid. So it's a bit of a smaller caravan, but yeah, it's got a pretty good electrical system in it. So let's check out what we've done. Yeah, so starting on the outside, so just on the drawbar here, we've just chucked a solar Anderson plug, uh, and then that's just wired into the MPPT uh, inside, that's a Victron one. Uh, then we've also just run a new charge harness uh, from the drawbar, just because uh, the old one they had wasn't a um, lithium compatible charge, and then we've upgraded that to the Victron 50, so we just had to upgrade the cable just to go all the way to the back there. And also just on the front and rear for these openings for the bears to come out each side, they've just got these latches. Um, and then, yeah, they were just rusted out. A couple of them on the back were broken. So we've just gone ahead and replaced them, two at the front, two at the back, just for some new ones. And then that way you shouldn't have any dramas with um, locking them up and then uh, utilizing them moving forward. And then just around to the side, uh, we just fixed these latches up. So they were pretty rusted out. And then they also didn't line up to the um, roof latch as well. So we've just gone ahead and taken them all off, uh, send them to uh, send them off to get um, sandblasted, and then we just repainted them. And then we'll just move the top latch over a little bit, just so it lines up now better with this one. And then you shouldn't have really any dramas getting them to latch uh, moving forward. So that's just two on the front and two on the rear. Uh, we've just done that for. And then just around the side here. We just replaced this light so it had an old like halogen light on it uh, so it wasn't very bright and then it didn't look the best so we just go ahead and swapped it out for an led one that just looks a little bit nicer that's pretty much everything on the outside so we'll jump on the inside and check that out yeah so just jumping into the entrance here so we just chucked this little handle on just to make it a bit easy to get in and out of the actual van uh yeah and we just made it black just to suit the rest of the upgrades we did because we've also chucked the 190 litre bushman um, fridge in so originally had the small little 133 way fridge that's a gas 240 and then from the uh, batteries but we've gone ahead and removed that because they're pretty inefficient fridges and then they wanted a bit bigger uh, fridge space so we've been able to get a 190 up in here to do that we had to do a fair bit of work we had to cut the bench top off that was on the top here we'll go ahead and remove that and then we just had to make all these brackets up just to, as infill panels just to make it look a little bit nicer otherwise you would have seen gaps everywhere and just wouldn't look the best so we just painted them black as well just to suit that and then um, we just put it on a switch here, so then that way they're able to turn the fridge on and off uh, instead of having to try to unplug it at the end and plug at the back. So yeah, we just had to cap off the gas just so that we could obviously remove that from the system. And then um, just, yeah, remove the 240. And then because there was still a 240 volt cable there, we decided to just put a GPO on the other side just to be able to utilize that if they wanted it for an outlet. And then that way just made it safe as well. We also uh, upgraded all the lights. So they just had all same thing as the outside, all halogen down lights. It wasn't very bright in here. So we just go ahead and replace all those for LED down lights just to get a bit more brightness in here and definitely help with um, making it a lot brighter. Then um, over on the other side at the rear, you just got the two RCDs there. So originally you just had the one RCD because it was just the same as pretty much every other caravan. Where it's just power comes in, goes to that RCD, and then from there it goes to all your outlets. So then as soon as you unplug from that short power, you've got no 240 volt power. So we put the multi plus in, and then to do that, we had to chuck that extra RCD in. Uh, so that's where that's just located over in the factory position over there. And then at the front of the uh, van is just where all the electrical stuff hid. So we've just got on either side at the compartments there, just the two batteries. So you've got two 200 amp hour Amtron batteries and they're just housed in both one of those sides there. And then the rest of the electrical equipment is chucked in here. So we've got the three KVA uh, Victron Multi Plus. And then, yeah, we've got all the fuses here. Everything's labeled with your um, midis and then your megas and then just a small little six way fuse box for your smaller circuits. And then the rest of the Victron gear is, yeah, you've got the 7515 for the solar blanket, uh, the 130 for the fixed solars on the roof because we've got two 150 uh, 50 watt solar panels on the roof. Didn't want to go too big because it is a pop top. If you go too much on there, obviously you'll be able to, it might just drop the roof down. So that's why we just did a bit smaller um, solar panel. So that's why you've got the 130 there. And then next to that is just the uh, Orion 30 amp DC charger. 
And then you got the smart shunt and then just a servo there. And then we just gone ahead and chucked it all in the ducting just to be able to tuck everything away and just makes it look pretty clean. Uh, and then that way, yeah, if you ever wanted to add onto it in the future, it's quite easily to do. Uh, because yeah, you can just pull that ducting um, face plate off and then you can run some extra cables in there, chuck that back on and it still looks pretty neat and tidy in there. Yeah, so up here is just where we've got the Touch 70. So we decided to put it on the doorway there. One, they already had like a pre-existing um, dual like red arc gauge, uh, battery gauge there. And obviously it's no longer needed with having this. So when we removed that, you had a hole there. So we just thought we'd chuck it over the top of that. There was also a little switch there as well that was no longer needed. So we're able to just cover that up. The other benefit to putting in there is pretty much kind of what I believe is the best place really to put it just inside the door. That way, if you ever want to know what's going on with your electrical system, you don't want to look at your uh, app, you can just open the door straight away and see what's going on. So if you're outside, it's quite easy to quickly check it. Or if you're inside, obviously it's easy. A lot of the time they're tucked in behind cupboards. Yeah, I don't know, each to their own, I guess. I personally don't like that because then you've got to open a cupboard to see it. I don't want to do that. I just want to quickly touch the screen. Okay, that's what's going on. See you later. So it was kind of a no-brainer to chuck it there. And it also was pretty close to the servo. So it allows us to put the Touch 70 in. You can put a Touch 70 in if you go for longer runs. The only thing you're going to have to put up with is it does flicker. The screen will flicker every now and again. Not a big deal, but it's just not great. So that's why we don't really like doing it. We're only really gonna put it in if we can put it in within maximum five meters of the servo. And then that way we know we won't have any dramas with it flickering. So that's why it was kind of no brainer to chuck it there. And then yeah, they're, they're set up pretty easily to follow really. You've got all your chargings on the left-hand side of the screen and then all your loads are on the right-hand side. And then a new, app, uh, new update they released not too long ago um, was just if you ever see like around the boxes these blue squares it means they're clickable you can get more information on it so you can just click on it and then you see straight away oh this is what's going on with my fixed solar with my um, portable solar and then it'd be the same if the charger was plugged into the car then you'll get another box showing you your DC charge and then if we had the shore power connected it would be the same thing there and then just the middle is just your inverter and then what's going on with the battery so you can just turn your inverter on and off here just by clicking on the box. Typically what we kind of say to people is you've got a few different modes you can select. You've got off, inverter, charger, and on. It gets pretty confusing, especially when you're taking in a lot of information at once to try to just remember how everything works. So a lot of time what we say to people is if you just want your 240 volt power to work, whether that's plugged into shore power to get AC charging or use your shore power for your inverting, or use your inverter just to invert 240 volt power you just want to set it to on and then if you don't want any 240 volt power that's nothing at all no charging absolutely no 240 coming in just set it to off and don't really worry about the inverter only or the charger only basically what those two functions mean that if you have a set to inverter only and you try to charge with the uh, shore power ac charge it's not going to work you'll only be able to invert power i.e produce 240 volt power and if you had it set to charger only, it means that no inverting will work. You'll get no 240 volt coming out, but you'll get AC charging to come into your batteries. Obviously, it can be a little bit confusing, so it's just pretty much easier just to go, if I want 240 volt power, set it to on. If I don't want 240 volt power, set it to off. Just makes it a bit simpler. So that's what those mean. And then just your grid current limit is just what I was speaking about earlier. If you had a... Uh, generator that couldn't handle too much power like it was only a 2kva generator you can't pull 16 amps out of that you're just going to end up overloading it and unfortunately the multi plus isn't smart enough to go oh, i'm going to start overloading this generator stop trying to pull that much power if you've told it pull 16 amps it's going to pull 16 amps it doesn't care where it, what is on the other end that's what it's going to try to do so obviously what that's going to mean is going to trip rcds or it's just going to overload your gen set so you really just want to limit that down. You can set it to six, three, or to a custom one, whatever suits you. And then he's going to hit set. And then all that is telling the multi plus is, hey, if you see shore power coming in, only pull this amount of power at it. But just remember that that's a 240. So don't think, oh, I need to set it to say five amps because I want to pull five amps at say 12 volt for my fridge. It's not talking about DC power right now. It's talking about amps in 240. So. For example, if you had the AC charger working on that, it's 120 amps of DC charging coming from AC. That converts to about eight and a half amps at 240 volt power. So if you were to be plugged into here, for example, and you had that maximum power coming in, you would see 120 amps here, 
which is talking about how much DC is going into the battery. But then up here, it would only say 8.5 amps because that's 8.5 amps at 240 or it's 120 at 12 volts. So just keep that in mind. That's what you're talking about when you're setting this limit. You're talking about the AC 240 volt limit, not how much power is actually coming in or out of the battery. So that's why like you just normally you'd have a set to 16 plugged in for a 15 amp outlet but the most you probably ever really see coming in unless you're pulling a lot of power as well would be about that eight and a half amps but yeah if you just need to lower it for your gen set or if you plugged into a 10 amp outlet you just adjust it there 10 amps if you're in a 10 amp outlet or then down further if you're into a gen set and it just stops you from overloading those circuits tripping rcds and so on and then everything on the right hand side is just your AC loads at the top and then just your DC loads down the bottom. So it's just a nice, easy way to separate it. They're not clickable, so you can't get any more information out of it. But the thing that's really nice about it is just if you're ever in a situation where you feel you're drawing too much power, it's just a nice, simple, easy way just to be like, oh, well, all my power is coming from DC loads. I must have a lot of DC loads on right now. Or you can be like, oh, I've got too much AC loads. I must be running my AC unit or duction cooking too much. I better back off on that. Otherwise, I'm gonna run out of power. And then you can just flip over to the levels and you can see any water tanks if you have them fitted. Uh, and then what we always do is we always chuck an electrical cabinet um, temperature sensor in. It comes with a multi plus, so we always just put that into the electrical box and just rename it electrical cabinet. So then that way you always just know kind of what that box is sitting at. And then if you want to add more temperatures on, uh, you can definitely do that. You can have up to four uh, temperatures and four tanks and then if you want to expand on to that you can just do that as well by adding another unit but the server comes with four and four and that will just be displayed there if nothing's connected then it just won't show anything uh but yeah we've got the one water tank fitted and just the one temperature sensor so that's where you can view all that there yeah so that's everything on this caravan it's uh yeah pretty small caravan but obviously has a pretty nice uh, electrical system in it and now they're able to go anywhere in australia and be able to go off grid so if you're after something similar or you'd like any more information you head over to our website and get in contact with us there